I just love that. Good morning, everyone. It is good to see you. Happy holidays and welcome to Union of Phoenix. My name is Richard Moraes. I'm the senior minister here and just welcome everyone. Great to see you. I'm Reverend Tina Brown. I'm the spiritual education minister and happy holidays and welcome. And I'm Jimmy Scott, pastoral care minister. Happy holidays. Pleasure to see you this morning. We've got a fantastic service in store for you. You know, this morning we have two intentions and the first one is that you have a deep and profound experience of God. We hope that whatever is going on in your life, that our service helps you to set that aside and just open your heart and allow God to minister to you, to heal you, to touch you, uplift you in whatever way your life is needing it. And we'll just take a deep breath and just open yourself to that experience of a profound experience of God. And then the second intention is that we hope you feel a great sense of connection and oneness, a sense of community. You know, Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And what he was really talking about is that we really multiply and magnify the presence and the power of spirit when we come together, when we join together. So please know whether you've been here, you are here for the very first time or you've been coming here for years, your presence makes a difference. It's all of our presence here today that creates the experience of God together. So I'm glad you're here and your presence makes a difference. So turn and now forward. won't you join with me as we affirm together our unity mission statement together. Unity of Phoenix is a loving spiritual community and welcomes all people and honors all paths to God. We are dedicated to transforming lives by inspiring and awakening individuals to discover God's spirit within them. Now is a time in our service for a time of prayer and meditation. So if you have your cell phones with you, I want to encourage you to either place those on silence or vibrate and Sally Jo will lead us in our meditational song. As we begin this time of prayer and meditation together, I first want to encourage you to get comfortable in your seat, to take a deep, refreshing breath, and just sort of mentally and emotionally let go of all the busyness of your holiday season. And make a conscious effort to be completely in this moment, relaxing your body, slowing down your mind, consciously being open and receptive to that divine spirit within you. The Apostle Paul referred to it as Christ in you, your hope of glory. So again, as we begin, I invite you to take a deep refreshing breath. Let go of any tension or any tightness in your body. And for the next few moments, just be quiet and still. and reflective. And in the quietness, I invite you to take the opportunity
be grateful for the many blessings in your life. For the gifts of family, friendship, of laughter and joyfulness. Grateful for the abundant universe within which we live and move and have our being. In a spirit of humility and faith, we pray for all the persons on our prayer list, for each person who is sitting here in this sanctuary today. And we give thanks for that divine spirit that indwells us all. For all the blessings, may we be ever so grateful in the name and through the nature of the living Christ. And so it is. Amen. Good morning again, everyone, and a shout out to everybody who tunes in and watches us online. Welcome. So there was this uh, shepherd herding his flock in this remote uh, pasture when suddenly a brand new BMW advances toward him in a cloud of dust. And then the driver of the car was this young man in an Armani suit 
with Gucci shoes, Ray-Ban sunglasses, and YSL tie, and he leans out of his window and says to the shepherd, if I can tell you exactly how many sheep you have, will you give me one of them? And the shepherd looks at this young guy, you know, young yuppie, and then he looks at his, uh, at his flock, you know, just peacefully grazing, and he answers calmly, he says, sure, why not? And then the yuppie um, parks his car, pulls out his Dell computer uh, notebook, and then connects to the AT&T, his AT&T cell phone, surfs the internet for an NSA uh, site on the internet, and he calls up a, a GPS navigation system to get an exact location on where he's located, which connects to another NSA uh, site that has a, a digital photo of high re resolution of exactly where he is. And then the young man opens a digital photo in, a, in Adobe Photoshop and exports it to an image processing center in Hamburg, Germany. <laughs> and within a few seconds, he receives an email on his iPhone 6 of the image being processed and saying that all the data has been stored. Then he accesses the MSSQL database through a connected ESL, uh, Excel spreadsheet with hundreds of complex formulas. And then he uploads the data in an email and gets a response. And then he prints a 150-page full-color report on his high-tech miniature HP laser printer. And then he finally turns to the shepherd and says, you have exactly 1,586 sheep. And the shepherd said, wow, that's absolutely right. So I guess you get to have one of my sheep. And so the shepherd just watches this guy grab one of the sheep and uh, just kind of is kind of laughing to himself as he stuffs it into his car. <laughs> and then the shepherd says, hey, I got something for you. If I can figure out exactly what you do, will you give me back my sheep? And then the young guy says, okay, why not? And then the shepherd says to him, you are a consultant. And the young yuppie says, wow, that's correct. How did you guess that? And the shepherd said, oh, there was no guessing required. He said, you showed up here, even though nobody called you. You want to get paid for an answer I already know to a question I didn't even ask you, and you don't have a clue about anything about our business. Now give me back my dog. <laughs> Woo. Now give me back my dog. I love that joke. I love that joke. That is one smart, sharp shepherd, I just tell you right now. And so today, we are going to be talking about the role of the shepherds and the role that they played in the Christmas story. You know, over the last couple of weeks, we've been really looking at the different aspects and the different qualities, the different characters in the Christmas story, in the Christmas narrative, to see what qualities they, they can help us with to have a deeper Christmas experience. Two weeks ago, I talked about Mary and how Mary had an amazing ability to open her, her, her heart fully to God. And even though she was told she would give birth to the Christ, something so much bigger than she thought possible for herself, she was willing to believe and open a space for God and knowing the thing that she thought was impossible, that through God, through her, that it was possible. And the fact is many of us are being called to give birth to something greater than we think we can do. But we, like Mary, need to open our heart and believe that God could do something amazing through us, even though we might not think it's possible. Last week, Reverend Jimmy did a phenomenal job in his talk about emotional quotient. And he used the Joseph, who sometimes we get situations that are tough, and we're the ones who get to choose how we respond. Joseph was put in a situation where his betrothed was already pregnant and had never been together. And a part of him wanted to divorce her secretly. But instead, he chose how he would respond, and he responded with character, with strength and integrity. He chose to trust God, and he demonstrated a level of love and support for Mary in giving birth um, to the Christ child. And sometimes we're called in tough situations to be a loving, open-hearted support to other people to help them succeed. Today, we're going to look at the role of the shepherds and see what message they have for us to have a deeper experience of Christmas. So I want to read to you from uh, the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. And here's what it says. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth and goodwill to all. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told to them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. So when I read that narrative, one of the first things that comes to me is uh, that the fact is that the shepherds were the very first to hear the good news of the birth of the Christ child. They were the very first. My question is why? Why were the shepherds the very first to hear about the birth of the Christ? Is it because they just happened to be close by? You think it was a coincidence? Or do you think it was just a random thing? Or was there a deeper reason? Was there a deeper message for all of us in why it was the shepherds? I think if you really look at shepherds at the time, in biblical times, they played a very important role, and they had certain qualities that were hugely valuable and important. And interestingly, the, even the symbol of being a shepherd was used in the Bible a lot. Like the 23rd Psalm, remember? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In the book of John, chapter 10, Jesus refers to himself as a shepherd, saying, I am the good shepherd. So I don't think it's a coincidence that shepherds were the first to hear about the good news of great joy. And I truly believe that there is a metaphysical message there is a spiritual lesson for all of us in how to receive the good news, how to use it and share that good news. And so there are four things. I'm going to take four lines out of the scripture I just read to you that about the shepherds to show you that they're a lesson to all of us in how to have a deeper experience of Christmas. And the first one is when it says they were living out in the fields. Think about that for a second. The shepherds were living out in the fields, which means they were de dwelling in, in a place that was quiet. They were dwelling in the quietness and in the openness. Uh, it was a place that was calm and peaceful and beautiful and serene. They were living out in the fields in an area where there was a lot of grass, and, you know, just a lot of greenery. And remember in the 23rd Psalm, it says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. There's a clear message of peacefulness and calmness and quietness and serenity from the idea of living out in the fields. And just to, as a juxtaposition, remember the, the context of the story of Christmas? You know, Mary and Joseph and everyone had to go to their original homes to be registered uh, in the census to be taxed. So people were coming to and fro. It was a hectic and crazy and busy time. And if you think about it, a tax is a burden on our resources. So people were feeling a little stressed, and they were having to move around in a lot of activity. There was a lot of busy activity going on. And that was symbolizing of some of the busyness and craziness of how life can be. And two things happen in this story that speak against the craziness and busyness. And that is the first one. Remember, there was no room in the inn. There were, so the Christ had to be born in an open space and a quietness. Not in a crowded, hectic place, in a quietness. And then the good news of the first thing that was shared by, to the shepherds, they were shared to a people who lived a life of solitude, a solitary life, away from the distractions, away from the noise, you know, away from the crowdedness and the hectic pace. And that is how, you know, the, 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 the Christ child was not only birthed and born, but those are the ones who received the good news. And it's a message to us that sometimes our lives can be crazy. Anybody find your life ever way too busy, busy all the time? Your calendar's always full, always more to do than, than you got time to do? And how many of you find your mind is even busier than your body? You can't even shut it down sometimes. Anybody? I think this is an, a very, very important message uh, for all of us because when there's no room in the inn means there's no peace. There's no place for the birth of new ideas. There's no place you know, for the birth of, uh, uh, of new understanding because everything is so busy and crowded. So the shepherds living in the field re really means that it's about a consciousness of abiding in a place of peacefulness and quiet. 
of serenity, of taking time for some solitude. You know, the shepherds, they didn't have a lot of people to talk to. They did more observing and listening. They tended to be more present and more calm and more aware. Because sometimes when we're so busy, we don't get that experience of being calm and present and aware. Here's what uh, David Kuntz in his book, Quiet Mind, says. He says, be still and be with yourself. By doing nothing, the being part of us comes alive. I want you to hear that again. By doing nothing, by being quiet, by doing nothing, the being part of us comes alive. See, when we're doing so much, sometimes the being gets squashed. Sometimes the busyness and the noise and the activity, while it seems fun, can sometimes actually squash out your sense of being. And what he says is the more you spend time in the quietness and, uh, and connect with your being, not only does it come alive, but when you get back to your life, you will actually, your doing will be more efficient because you spend more time being. Does that make sense, everyone? And so the whole idea with the shepherds, the very first thing of why they were receptive to this idea, because they were calm, they were centered, they took time for solitude that made them more present, more peaceful, more open, more receptive, more centered, and more aware. And my question for you with this first lesson, living out in the fields, are you willing to take some time to develop a consciousness of quietness and solitude to make you more present, more peaceful, and more aware, and more receptive? Second thing it says is that keeping uh, watch over their flock at night. You know, the shepherds, their job was to protect and nurture and guide the sheep so that they wouldn't go in harm's way, that they would take a good and path that, that was safe and important to them. And one thing we know about sheep is that sometimes they're innocent, they're sweet, they're wonderful, but sometimes they can wander and get lost. In Scripture, it tells us about lost sheep. There are parables about saying that sheep can get lost. And sometimes sheep can go in ways that are uh, in, in harmful and go in ways that really are not for their highest good. You know, and the sheep kind of reminds me, you know, keeping watch over our flock at night is sometimes the, the thoughts in our heads can kind of go wander. You know, can, can, sometimes we can think some things and make some uh, bad decisions. You know, anybody ever have your mind like wander and start worrying and thinking people are against you and to the point you worry so much you start to freak out? Anybody ever freak out or, you know, get, go crazy? Or anybody ever, you know, m um, you know, make some bad choices, you know, get into a relationship, you know, probably wasn't a good thing, or you make an investment that wasn't great, or ever anybody opened your mouth and said something without thinking and you really regretted it. Anybody ever have situations like that? I mean, I put them in a category, a whole bunch of a category called it seemed like a good idea at the time. It seems we all have, you know, and sometimes we could just do some crazy things, and sometimes our mind, it, it can be a dangerous place, and especially at night, you know, it, you know, somebody once said, my mind is like a bad neighborhood. You don't want to go there at night. You know, you don't want to go in there, you know? You know, sometimes, you know, our, our minds can be like a dark room. That's where negatives are developed, you know? That's not the place. Sometimes our mind, and it, sometimes it seems to be worse at night. At night, the mind can wander to fear and negative scenarios. I mean, so, some so we make, sometimes make some poor decisions, you know, at night. So one of the things for me is, like, I, like I really like uh, sugar. When I'm on it, whoa, I want more of it. Cookies, fudge, chocolate, you name it. I love it. When I'm off of it, I'm okay. And then during the day, I'm good. But when I'm laying in bed by myself at night, like right now, there's a pan of fudge, homemade fudge with walnuts on my, uh, on my um, kitchen island. And I'm telling you, Friday night, I'm laying in bed, and I get a little craving, and I'm thinking. And then I hear the, 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 ch the fudge talking to me. <laughs> no, really. It, it's trying to seduce me. It said, come here, big boy. <laughs> I swear. I know you want some sugar, and I got some sugar for you. It, it, seriously, this fudge is talking to me, and it's night, and, and I'm weak, and I'm vulnerable. You know, and sometimes, it, you know, the, our minds can do things to ourselves. Jimmy, you ever had donuts talk to you like chocolate talk to me? Man, it's crazy. It's crazy. And I think we've all had times where we don't make some good decisions at night, you know. And that's why it says keeping watch over your flock at night. And your flock really re represents all your thoughts. And sometimes our thoughts can run in places that worry us and bring us fear, think people are against us. You know, sometimes our thoughts are not. And so the thing about a shepherd is a shepherd protects. Make sure that the, sh the sheep are moving in the right direction, not making bad choices, not going in places that aren't good. And sometimes we need to be discerning about the things we think and the actions we engage in. And this is why turning to our inner shepherd, who is discerning and wise, who has a higher view of the sheep than, than the sheep, 
sheep can help us, and we need to be willing to turn to it. And sometimes when you're torn in a decision like that, we need to ask the inner shepherd in us to say, is this the best decision for me? Is this eating this thing for my highest and best good? Is being in this relationship for my highest and best good? Is saying what I want to say in the interest of my highest and best good? See, each of us need to be like shepherds over the flock of our own thoughts, and especially at night, to make sure we're guiding them in the healthiest thoughts, the healthiest actions in all areas of our lives. This is making sense, everyone. You know, living out in the fields is a consciousness of quietness to make ourselves open, aware, and receptive. And then wa- keeping watch over our flock at night is to be careful of the thoughts that you're thinking. Let the shepherd in you guide you to, more, to discern what is for your highest and best. Third thing is, I loved when they said, when they heard the news, um, they said, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. See, easily, these guys, are, you know, they're out in the field. The angel says, hey, the Christ is born. They could have said, wow, that's fabulous. Thanks for sharing. And they could have just went on their own. You know, kid, oh, great news. High five, high five, high five, and just stayed right there. But they didn't. What was impressive is they heard the news, and they said, let's go to Bethlehem and see for ourselves. I want you to hear how important that is. Sometimes we hear bright ideas. Oh, that's a great thing to do. You know, it would be great for me to work out every day. Great for me. But the fact is, they said, let's do it for ourselves. Let's go to Bethlehem and experience it for ourselves. They were so inspired, they wanted to act and experience it themselves. They didn't want to enjoy it vicariously. They didn't want to hear about it's a nice idea. They wanted to go and experience it for themselves. They wanted to have a first-hand experience of the divine, of this amazing birth, a first-hand experience of God. That's what Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, why should we not have a first-hand and immediate experience of God? And for us to do that, you must be willing to go to your Bethlehem. You must be willing to take that inner journey and discover it and be filled with an awareness of the presence and the power of God. It's a nice idea, but are you willing to go there? The kingdom of God is within you. Are you willing to go deeper in? That's why it even says, go to the secret place of the Most High. No one can go to the secret, your secret place, but you. You know, when Jesus said pray, he said, go into your inner chamber and shut the door away from the distractions and speak to your heavenly Father. No one can go there but you. You know, the fact is you don't need a church. You don't need a minister. You don't need to, to, to read the Bible. You don't need to watch Joel Osteen. But I think going to church and listening to ministers is a very good thing. I just want to say that for the record. <laughs> I just want to say that. You don't need it because you have to go to the secret place. No matter how many times you go to church, no matter how many times you listen to good talks or watch Osteen or read, the fact is at some point you have to make that journey. You have to say, I am willing to go to my Bethlehem. I am willing to go deeper and listen and allow spirit to, to uplift my soul and to take me to a, a deeper place. You know, what I loved is that the prediction of the birth of the Christ happened 600 years before in the book of Isaiah when it said, For unto you is born a child, and he shall be called one Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And the fact is, are you willing to take that trip to Bethlehem, to go to Bethlehem, your Bethlehem, to feel the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father? the Almighty God, the wonderful counselor that is within you. Only you can go within and deeper for you, and only I can do it for me. We can encourage each other, but you're the only one that can make the journey. Let's go to Bethlehem and experience it ourselves. And then the final thing, it says that they were spreading the word and praising and glorifying God. And they were so filled with the thrill of the Spirit, they started sharing the news, and it said people were amazed. And you know what I think people were amazed at? It wasn't just that they were saying words. It's the joyful energy that they were filled with. It was the spirit they were filling it with. They were filled with so much joy, so much energy. People were amazed. They were spreading the word. You know, St. Francis of Assisi once says, preach the gospel at all times and only when necessary use words. And what he's saying is live it. Live it. Let it radiate from your being and your joy and your smile and everything you do, and that will spread the word far more than wor- spread the word far more than words itself. The very first movie I ever saw was uh, the Ten Commandments, and you remember when uh, Moses went up to the mountain and he came down and his hair was all white and he was all radiant. And to me, that is a powerful message that when you are so filled and thrilled with the Spirit, it will radiate from your being. People will notice the change in you. They will see the light shining from you in a radiant way, and they will be amazed. 
they will be touched and inspired by your presence. The deeper you're willing to go into your Bethlehem, and you will begin, you will spread the word just by your energy and your joy and your spirit. You know the word enthusiasm, by your enthusiasm, it means entheos, which means God within you. That when you are thrilled with the God within you and live from that place, you will spread the word and touch lives in amazing ways. And sometimes we think we're not good enough. I don't have enough. You know, remember the little drummer boy, he wanted to play, you know, for the, for, for the king, and he, and he thought, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I, you know, I, m- m- my song isn't good enough. My drum, my talent isn't good enough. And the fact is, in, I love in the song, it says, is to just play your best. Don't compare yourself to anybody. Just do your best. Share the love that is in your heart. Share the gift that is in with you. Share the beauty. Share your smile. Share your gifts. And that's the greatest thing for you. It's to share the very best that God has put in you. That's how you spread the word. That's how you glorify God. That's how you praise God. And my question for you is, are you playing your best for God? Are you expressing the best of the gifts that God has placed in you? Are you expressing the best qualities of the Christ in you? And I ask you, is there an area in your life where you're not playing your best? Where you're not loving at your highest level? Where you're not maybe treating yourself with the gentleness and kindness that you deserve? You know, is there someone in your life that you could be more kind to? Is there a, an outlook that you could have that might be healthier and better for yourself? Are there talents and gifts that you're withholding that you fully haven't allowed yourself to express? I'll play my best for him. That's the greatest way you can spread the word and glorify and, and praise God is by giving your very best and living it. I guarantee you, when you shine your light that way, people, people will be amazed. And it's the best way to spread the word. Phil and Will built a skating rink in the middle of a pasture. And a shepherd wanted to take a shortcut and take his sheep across the rink instead of going around. But his sheep were afraid of the ice and they wouldn't cross. So in frustration, the shepherd started dragging them, dragging them across the rink, tugging at them. And then Phil looked at Bill and said, Hey, look at that shepherd. He's trying to pull the wool over our ice. Wow. You know, I was debating if I should have told that joke, and um, a part of me thought maybe I should have asked my inner shepherd, is it in my highest and best to share that joke? (laughs) Apparently, I should have taken my own advice. So anyway, the fact is, I'm not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. I'm not, because I believe there's a powerful message that the shepherds are trying to teach all of us. Number one, living out in the fields is that about a consciousness that is abiding in peace and quietness of taking time for solitude, to be more aware and more receptive to spirit. Number two is to keeping watch over our flocks at night. You know, the the flock and the the sheep of our thoughts, we need to make sure we're guiding them and making wise, discerning decisions, even asking the shepherd, is this the right, best decision for me? And then third is to let's go to Bethlehem. Let's take that inner journey and find out and experience for ourselves a first-hand experience of the divine, of the Prince of Peace, and the wonderful counselor within. And then the fourth is to spread the word and glorify God by just giving your best, living your best, being enthusiastic about the spirit you're in, and let it radiate from you. This week, I want you to take one thing, whether it's a smile or joy or complimenting someone, take one thing and express it and embody it. I guarantee you, it will spread the word and glorify God more than anything. Just one thing. Smile at everyone every day, whatever it is. Take one little thing, and it will make a difference. I truly believe that at some level, God is calling each and every one of us to a deeper experience of Christmas. And all we need to do is to follow and allow ourselves to be like the shepherds. God bless you all. All right, so we're going to join with our amazing group of kids as we affirm together our prayer protection. Together, you want to help us out? The love of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Thanks, Caden. Great job. So everybody, let's all rise now as we join our kids and all of us as we sing together our song of peace. Great job, kids. Thanks, Caden. Good job. Bye, God.
Bless you, everybody. Great day and a wonderful week. See you Wednesday.